One of the first things we want to know about any subject is uh, how it worked for somebody else. Uh, if you buy an automobile, how does it work for somebody else? And with prayer, we're just as inquisitive. How does prayer work for somebody else? In the annals of history, we find that prayer has been a successful medium of getting big jobs done. Some of the greatest men that ever lived were men of prayer. George Washington knew how to pray. Abraham Lincoln knew how to pray. The great missionaries of the world were men of prayer. They moved nations by prayer. And we're so glad that we have the evidence of this. And if we can go to the Bible, more or less exclusively, we find there that the great men of, of God's history, of Bible history, were men that understood prayer and prayed. They were not just men of giant intellect, and they were not men of just great brawn, but they were men that knew the secret of prayer. I know to many people prayer seems unnecessary, and to many people prayer seems like something just added. But we'd like for you to know that the men that changed the world were men that knew how to pray. And our new generation is coming up. We must teach the young men and the young women, above all things, how to pray. It's an armor. We have not limited this lesson to just men and women of the <clears throat> New Testament. Just Jesus and the disciples and people like this. But we've gone back further. We found some of the greatest prayers ever on record are found in what we call the Old Testament. We've discovered through listening very carefully that the ear of God is not heavy and that he can hear anything that we say to him. And we want him to hear your needs and our needs. If man has an electronic ear, like radio, the telephone, and so forth, that can take his message and transfer it to the uttermost parts of the earth, even while people sleep, surely the Lord can hear the prayers of his servants by day or by night. Let us begin by reading one of the great prayers said by a man prayed to God. If you would open your Bible with me to 1 Kings chapter 8, beginning in verse 22, let us read some together. Solomon stood before the altar of Jehovah in the presence of all the congregation of Israel. He spread forth his hands toward heaven, and he said, Lord God of Israel, there is no God like thee in heaven above or earth beneath who keepeth covenant and mercy with all thy servants and that walk before thee with all their hearts. That's tremendous praying. That's, how could you beat that kind of praying? And that was prayed over 3,000 years ago. Who hath kept with, my, with thy servant David, my father, and thou hast promised him Thou speakest also with, my, with thy mouth, and hast fulfilled it with thine hand, as it is this day. Telling God how he had answered prayer. Isn't that beautiful? Therefore now, Lord, the God of Israel, keep with thy servant David, my father, that thou promised him, saying, There shall not fail a man in my sight to sit on the throne of Israel, so the children, thy children take heed to their way, that they walk before me as thou hast walked before me. Now, Lord God of Israel, let thy word, I pray thee, be verified, which thou spakest unto the servant David my father. But God will indeed dwell on the earth. Behold, the heaven and the heavens of heavens cannot contain thee. How much less this house that I built it. You better believe it. Yet thou hast respect unto the prayers of thy servant, and to his supplications, O Lord my God, to hearken unto the cry and to the prayer which thy servant prayeth before thee this day. Here was a man named Solomon, king, who knew how to address God. If you read the 
rest of that chapter, you'll find that he really believed in praying. And he prayed until the glory of God came down. The, the priests could not minister in the temple. And the glory was so great uh, until everything was at a standstill. The majesty of God stood over them. What a prayer. What a tremendous prayer. How many of history prayed successfully? What is the paramount thing in prayer? I'd say that the greatest things about prayer is that great prayers must be sincere. No fooling around. God cannot deal in insincerity. God does not deal with the superfluous. You say it simply and you say it from your heart and you mean it and you live by it. No deceit, no hypocrites. Great prayers have to do with the unlacing of the soul and the opening up of the spirit and the looking into the innermost parts of a man. That's great prayers. Slight prayers and little memorized prayers and reading little books and things like that may be of inspiration, but they're not what we are talking about today. We're talking about the thing that changes the world. Jesus didn't read out of a book that night in, in Gethsemane. He prayed until sweat ran down his face and it was bloody sweat. The agony was so great the carpuscles bursted open and blood ran down his face. That's praying. That's praying. I have personally prayed so hard and in such agony till I said, Lord, save my life. Please. I thought I was going to die. I, I have prayed with such severity and, and, and such strength until I said, well, I can't get back. I can't come back. I'm dying. And I'd say, Lord, save my life. And I have moved back out of that, that prayer into a place to where I was again as I was before. There, there is strength in prayer. There's power in prayer. There's glory in prayer. It all begins with sincerity. You've got to be absolutely honest with God to know anything about great praying. Great praying must not only be sincere, but it must be unselfish. If Solomon had prayed that great prayer, O oh Lord, establish me and make me great and make me rich, <laughs> I don't think it would even be in the book. There wouldn't have been any place for it. The reason it's a historic prayer, it was for others. It was for a people. It even went so far as to say if we, if we fall in sin and we're sent away off, if we look back toward this place, forgive us of our sins. Just when we look back toward this place where your glory is today. What a prayer. So a prayer must first be uh, sincere. It must then, it must be unselfish. Great prayers are never selfish. Great prayers are always for others. Always. Little prayers are for yourself. Great prayers are for others. In the third place, great prayers prayed by great people must be prayed in faith. There must be deep trust and deep knowledge inside. You must know that you know God. Sure that you're sure. And, and then, then, you know, you got it. You got it. Uh, the Arab man years ago that spoke to his son and said, Son, today you go out and face the world. He says, These are the kinds of people out there. They're those that know not, and they know not that they know not, and they're fools. Shun them. He said, son, there are people out there that know not, and they know that they know not. They're simple. Teach them. He says, my son, there are people out there that know, but they do not know that they know. They're asleep. Awaken them. But said, my son, there are a few people out there that know, and they know that they know. He says, they're wise. Follow them. If you can learn to pray that way, men will follow you. You better believe it. When you pray, pray in knowledge. My Father, which art in heaven. <laughs> you know who he is and you know where he is. You see, that's prayers of knowledge, not ignorance. The heathen don't know where their gods are. They don't, they don't know because they, they don't exist anyway. But we do. He lives within our breast. He lives upon his throne and we're sure of it. Prayers must be prayers of faith to know something and to be sure that you know makes all the difference in the world. Men of history 
prayed successfully. They prayed great prayers. History teaches us that sincere men, earnest men, prayed successfully, like Abraham on the rugged, on the rugged heights of Mount Moriah in the center of Jerusalem, his son facing death, Abraham prayed. His son came back alive. He saw Calvary for the first band that ever saw it. Jesus said, Abraham saw my day and was glad. What a prayer he must have prayed that day. And I think when we get to heaven, we'll be able to push a button and see every scene of history reenacted. And we just, and there we'll see Abraham and the battle that went and the prayer that was prayed. Oh, brother, it's worth going to heaven for. I want you to believe it. Jacob prayed. He prayed with tremendous intensity until God changed his name from Jacob to be a prince with Israel. Prince of God called him Israel. What intense, all night he travailed, prevailed. He didn't fail because he was a man that stuck in there. Moses prayed, prayed tremendous prayers that shook the world around about him. What a praying man Moses was. David prayed. He was one of the greatest men in all prayer history. In Psalm 36 and 34 and verse 6, he says, This poor man cried, speaking of himself, And the Lord heard him, Jehovah heard him, and saved him out of all of his troubles. He knew how to pray, got out of all of his troubles through crying out to God. In Psalm 86 and 80, he says, Among the gods there is none like unto thy works. All nations whom thou hast made shall come and worship before thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name. That's good praying. <laughs> Tremendous praying. Uh, victorious praying. In the New Testament, the disciples knew how to pray. In Luke 11 and 1, they said, Jesus, teach us how to pray. Says, okay, I'll do that. It came to pass that as Jesus was praying in a certain place when he ceased, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. The Lord said, I will, and he taught them how to pray. He gave them the Lord's Prayer and also the three prayer worlds. And so he did teach them how to pray. Whether we look in the fore part or the after part of the Bible, we find men that knew how to pray. In the Old Testament, we have a man named Isaiah. It was a prophet of God. Isaiah 12 and 2, he said, In that day shall ye say, Praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his doings among all the people, make mention of his name. That is exalted. A mighty man. A mighty man that knew how to pray. That man, Isaiah. What a tremendous person he was. A friend of his, companion of his name, Jeremiah. He understood how to pray. In Jeremiah 5 and 25, he said, your iniquities have turned away these things, and your sins have withholden good things from you. He got a hold of those people, got a hold of their hearts, got a hold of their needs. He was a man that knew the powers of prayer. It's a great book, the book of Jeremiah. He was a great preacher, a great man, a great leader. He knew how to pray. Prayer brought things to pass. Prayer made things happen. How beautiful, delightful it is. Ezekiel was another man, a tremendous, tremendous a man of prayer. In Ezekiel 20 and 35, he said, Yet, and I will bring unto you the wilderness of the people, and there will I plead with you face to face, like as I pled with you and your fathers in the wilderness of the land of Egypt, so that I will plead with you, saith the Lord, and I will cause you to pass under the rod, and I will bring you into the bond of the covenant. Here is a man pouring out himself, saying that God is pleading and, and, and begging that we come to him through prayer, through prayer, that we come unto him. He was a man that understood what prayer was like. That whole book of Ezekiel just flows with his heart reaching out to God, his spirit reaching up to God, and God reaching back down to him. A woman prays. Many times we only think of men praying uh, in history. In our own lives, we know more women pray than anybody else in our churches. In 1 Samuel 1 and 11, <clears throat> here's a woman named Hannah. Uh, she was praying for a son. 
that she would name him Samuel, and she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if thou would indeed look on the affliction of thine handmaid, and remember me, and not forget thine handmaid, and will give unto thine handmaid a child, then I will give him unto the Lord all the days of his life, and there shall no razor ever come upon his head. He was to be a Nazarite. You know the story. <clears throat> Samuel was born, became one of the greatest prophets of all of history. That's a prayer of a woman reaching up and reaching out to God. Great men and women of history, great people of history, prayed successfully. They not only prayed, they got it. And if they got it, you can get it. You see, if it happened to them, it can happen to you. The Bible says God is no respect of persons. Whoever you are right now, God cares for you as much as he does anybody we've spoken about today, he equally with you. And so reach up and reach out to God and let God grant to you the desires of your heart. This woman, Hannah, was not anything particular or special. She was just a woman that says, I'm going to have what I want. She was in the temple praying. Her agony was so great that the preacher thought she was drunk. Some preachers can't tell the difference between prayer and drunkenness. And, and uh, thought she was drunk and she says, I am not, but I am great travail with God. That's prayer. Ask him for a son. And God granted it to her, a son. He became a great, great person for God. But not only was it these kind of people that prayed, anybody can pray. We, we really want you to feel that. Anybody can pray. You can pray. It doesn't have to be someone special. In Matthew chapter 15, beginning in verse 22, it says, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast. She was a heathen woman, pagan woman. Cried unto him, saying, have mercy on me, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. Now, you may not know much about the devil, but you remember if your family get devil possessed, and you can find out a lot. You can learn pretty fast. But he answered and said, not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, send her away. Some preachers are really get you down, you know. Send her away. So she crieth after us. She wasn't crying after them at all. She was crying after Jesus. But he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, and saying, Lord, help me. And brother, she got it. She prayed the right kind of prayer. She had the kind of stick to itiveness that worked, and she got the desire of her heart. She found that her daughter was healed that very hour that was grievously vexed with a bad spirit. God set her free. Jesus set her free. And so a woman, a heathen woman, pagan woman, she got it. There was sincerity inside. There was devotion inside. She was willing to follow the light as soon as she saw it. She was willing to believe in Jesus, and she got it. So it doesn't matter whether you're from Africa uh, or Asia or South America or the North Pole. It doesn't matter where you're from. God loves you. God will bless you. God will help you. God will answer your prayers, and he wants to do it. He'll do it right now. No putting it off. He'll do it right now. The devil is a liar. The truth is not in him. God cares for you. And whoever you might be, Jesus loves you. And he's reaching out to you right now to bless you in a very particular way. We read in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 8 and verse 13 that Jesus said unto the centurion, Go thy way, and as thou hast believed, so be it done unto thee. And his servant was healed in that self same hour. Here was a man that was a Roman soldier. Being a centurion, you'd have at least 100 people. That's what century means, 100. Uh, at least 100 people under him. From that up to about 2,500, we understand. Uh, and, and so here he was, a, a military man. And, and when he came, he had a sick servant. That was mighty generous of him to get out and go look for help for a, a sick servant. Some people are not so kind to the servants. But uh, he says, uh, I have a servant that needs to be healed now, Lord. Would you do something about it? And the Lord Jesus, as you read that story, did a great work. He, he did. He said, uh, don't come under my roof. All you've got to say is be healed and he'll be healed. And Jesus said, I haven't seen faith like this anywhere at all. He says, I am uh, overcome with your faith. And that man's, that man's servant was completely healed by the power of God because there was a man requesting it. See, that is prayer. Request is prayer. He says, oh God, oh Christ, Heal my servant. And the Lord says, yes, I will. And the Bible says from that self-same hour, the servant was healed. 
From that very moment, the servant was healed. Neighbor friend, there's hope for you. There's hope for you right now. How did the men and the women of history pray? Did they pray successfully? And if they did, why not us? I've always said anything that God did for my grandpa, he'd certainly do it for me. God won't be any better to him than he, was, than he is to me. Anything that God has done, he can do. And anything that God can do, he will do. And anything that he will do, he has done. So we got it. We got it right there. Tune up your praying. Believe in God. What God did for Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Moses, David, Joshua, he'll do it for you. He will do it for you. Put your faith in him. Put your trust in him. Let God do great things for you. Prayer is the unceasing activity of men of stature men of greatness, men of decision, men that build nations and build cities and build churches and build great institutions. Prayer is the unceasing activity toward God that these men work with. And God wants you to join their ranks. Believe in prayer, experience prayer, and come back with a testimony of the power of God that sets men free. Prayer can affect and does affect all important areas in your life. Whatever situation arise in your life, God has an interest in it. God wants to bless you in it. God wants to help you in it. Some people only pray for spiritual things. No, God can bless material things. God can bless domestic situations. Our country is being torn to pieces by divorce. God is not willing. God is not willing. God is not willing for this. <clears throat> God wants us to love our, our mates our wives, our husbands. And God wants us to be patient and forgiving, just like God is toward us. And prayers for them can turn them around. But arguments, beating one another with words, will do only destroy love and cast you farther apart. I urge you, try God's way in Jesus' name. Prayer affects all of the important situations. All the important decisions of your life uh, should be laid in the prayer pattern. Thy will be done. Not my will, but thy will be done. The power of prayer is an unlimited source of strength and energy and love and compassion and blessing. How beautiful it is to believe God for answered prayer. As the men of history found it to be true, I urge you, find it to be true that God answers prayer. And if God answered Abraham's prayer, God will answer your prayer. You can believe that. You can accept that. And you can have a great miracle from God for it. I'd like to bless you, if I might, if you permit me to, <laughs> right now. I thank you, Lord, for the honor of teaching. And I have the great belief and faith in my heart that the tremendous men and women of history were praying people. They knew how it meant to lock hands with God, to lock hands with divine destiny, to interlink themselves with omnipotence, and to be what no human could be without God. We thank you for men and women that prayed. And God is looking today for men and women that will pray in faith and in sincerity. We urge, Lord, right now that you will bless our neighbors, please. Right now, sanctify them. Right now, help them every good way. I believe you for the miracle of God in Jesus' name.